Hello dear fans, friends and subscribers. Welcome to the Cricket Happening Show with your host Ram. And yes, talking about uh, um, today's cricket show, well, definitely we have. I have to speak about Bangladesh, which really put up a very, very poor exhibition of batting as they lost the match. Even though the one day's play was uh, totally washed out, uh, New Zealand actually won the test series on the fourth day itself as not only did they bowl out the Bangladeshis for 173 and knocked off the runs that were required. In fact, uh, New Zealand uh, definitely took a good lead uh, with Henry Nichols leading the way with 98 in the morning and then uh, we had this Bangladeshi uh, batting once again succumbing to the New Zealand bowling which was very poor and uh, Bangladesh, I, I can say that once again uh, they have uh, they have not really improved their test record and that is what is wanted from Bangladesh and uh, they have failed in that effort I would say uh, as uh, they were bowled out and not only that New Zealand knocked off the whatever the runs was needed in double quick time to see to it that the match did not go into the final day uh, because they promoted uh, Colin D. Grand home who came and uh, thrashed the Bangladeshi bowling with four sixes to complete the match and it was a bit surprising to say even after a day was lost, Bangladesh still couldn't prevent uh, the defeat. And they just they lost the two test series 2-0. Now, the other thing uh, that I'll be looking on this uh, cricket show, uh, other than that, would be uh, that uh, South Africa will be really happy to see that finally A.B. de Villiers has been selected. As you know, after the third final T20 where A.B. de Villiers should be playing, uh, one also knows that there's a one-day series coming up between South Africa and Sri Lanka and A.B. de Villiers uh, has been, uh, is back, he has been selected in the squad and also uh, the 20-year-old the, the year -old pace bowler Lungi Gidi, uh, Ningidi I would say, N-G-I-D-I, uh, he bowled excellently, in fact he picked up wickets, gave the breakthroughs and he was the man of the match as well and he was the, he was the man who has been rewarded is just 20 years of age and he's very pacey he's very aggressive and he does not give you uh, much room for really runs and that's what one has seen he has been very tight too and he has been rewarded uh, by giving him an opportunity uh, in the one day international series against uh, sri lanka and i think that's the right way to go uh, to blood and youngster um, and other than that uh, we, we have the T20 series coming up between England and India now after the ODI series is over and India have decided to rest uh, their key spin bowlers Ravi Chandran Ashwin and, per and, uh, and Ravindra Jadeja and they have brought in the leggy Amit Mishra and also the Kashmiri off spinner Parvez Rasool uh, who is back into the, who is into the team. So well I will be looking into that later but first let's look at what happened between Bangladesh and New Zealand and how did Bangladesh lose the match on the fourth day itself in the second test at Christchurch thus losing the series uh, in a very tame fashion 2-0. Uh, well as far as New Zealand were concerned uh, they they resumed their uh, batting uh, with uh, Tim Saudi and Henry Nichols at the crease in the morning. Uh, Nichols was uh, just continuing his good work uh, as uh, he was seeing to it uh, that uh, he was uh, really playing in a very very uh, compact manner uh, guarding his wicket and at the same time uh, not leaving any opportunities uh, to go a begging when the ball was actually short or the ball was a loose ball served to him. Um, Tim Saudi contributed 17 before Shaky Blasen lured him uh, into driving one into uh, it was firmly struck but I thought Madison Miras uh, took a good catch it was a real uh, sort of a um, it was hit with the real force by Tim Saudi and uh, Saudi was gone for 17 yeah, with three fours. That was the first uh, wicket that New Zealand got. After that Neil Wagner walked in and started giving company to uh, Henry Nichols uh, and the partnership once again uh, started growing. So basically New Zealand started building the lead after the uh, dismissal of Saudi. Uh, Neil Wagner was the one who gave him company uh, to actually extend the lead further uh, as uh, the lead um, uh, they, they started getting a handy lead one could say as uh, the score uh, they reached uh, 343 for 9 uh, sorry 343 for 8 at that stage and then um, 
finally henry nichols uh, was uh, uh, was really beaten uh, by a delivery from medios and miraz especially one felt sorry for henry nichols that uh, he had to depart for 98 with 12 boundaries by the time uh, they had already taken lead of 54 runs and then finally uh, when the, and neil wagner was also doing a good job of uh, blocking well uh, trent bold remained order on 7 and this new zealand innings was um, uh, brought to a, a quick end uh, when uh, neil wagner uh, was given out run out and it was uh, the reason that he was run out was that uh, Uh, he was uh, uh, there there should be some bo- part of the uh, bat which should be grounded uh, which was not so and neil wagner was given run out uh, for 26 with 3 4 uh, uh, sort of didn't stir up any controversy but definitely uh, there was a lot of uh, things uh, talk- talked about uh, after this match as if whether neil wagner's run out was a genuine one or what was it but nevertheless uh, it was all over new zealand were uh, bowled out for 354 uh, thus it was a 65 runs lead uh, that was uh, uh, taken by a uh, 65 runs lead uh, was uh, taken by uh, new zealand uh, by, by uh, yeah 65 runs lead in the first innings uh, and then as far as the bowling was concerned uh, shakib alasan was the pick of the bowlers four wickets for 50 other than that two wickets to medios and miraz kamrul islam rabin one wicket one wicket to task in ahmed now it was bangladesh turn they were uh, they were 65 runs in arrears when they started uh, and uh, it was um, it all started uh, with tim saudi uh, giving them a very quick breakthrough when he had tummy mick ball tempted into a hook shot uh, and uh, santner uh, actually picking up the catch he was gone for eight but that was wicket number 1 for bangladesh so score at 17 for 1 somya sarkar played some a uh, nice strokes that he that he showed uh, everyone in the first innings mahmudullah uh, was also also played some nice strokes and uh, slowly uh, they pushed on the score uh, to 58 uh, and definitely there was a change in the approach it was not any aggressive batting uh, they were really uh, trying to occupy the crease uh, and play in a very sensible manner but then colin de granholm came into bowl and he forced uh, somya sarkar to edge one Uh, into the slips uh, and g travel was the one who made no mistake so some sarkar was gone caught travel bowl d grand home for 36 with six boundaries um, and uh, as i said some sarkar definitely played well and the score at 58 for 2 and shakib alasan walked in to join mahmudullah um, after that it was uh, tim saudi uh, coming on to his uh, he had already taken wicket number 199 and that was tummy mcball and then finally what a wicket to get for team saudi uh, in fact uh, shakib al hasan uh, uh, actually went for a sort of a drive and in the process he actually tried to actually cream the ball it was short and wide ball he tried to actually cream it through the point region but colin de grand home uh, uh, got a good catch and shakib al hasan was gone and that was wicket number 200 uh, for the new zealand bowler team saudi and that was a big wicket for uh, uh, new zealand and shakib lesson was uh, gone for eight uh, with one boundary so that made it 73 for three and then mahmudullah was at the crease and, and nazmul hussain shanto uh, uh, walked in to play his second innings of his career uh, and he joined mahmudullah well nazmul hussain shanto was really tested by some short deliveries and it was a real uh, uh, sort of a real uh, tough time for nazmul hussain shanto and after that uh, neil wagner came in Uh, and neil wagner actually went on to hit the stumps of mahmudullah uh, after uh, mahmudullah was clean bowled uh, by wagner for 38 with five boundaries so that made it 92 for four and sabir rahman was forced to um, um, you know uh, uh, forced to play at a ball which actually lifted on him from wagner and wagner was really uh, firing it in i would say at that time he was firing well he was getting the ball to really lift from the good length spot and he was also his pace was also going up a notch at the time he was bowling with some consistent consistently good pace and he was a real very some factor for bangladesh because uh, as you know he likes to uh, pepper the batsman with short deliveries he did that and in the process he also picked up the wicket of sabir rahman who was forced to actually play at a delivery that lifted on him and watling behind the sticks uh, did the rest he was gone for not and nurul hasan was also uh, sent back in the same over 
uh, by Wagner as another uh, ball which Nurul Hassan actually played into the hands of Watling. He was gone for naught and uh, that was tea time and at tea time the score read a very poor 100 for 6 and uh, they were only 35 runs in front and one knew that uh, definitely the writing was getting on the wall. Nasmul Hussain Shanto was there at the other end but as I said he was really struggling and then but uh, he was uh, he was um, I would say removed out of his misery uh, by Trent Bold who actually uh, got a pinpoint Yorker uh, onto the base of the stamps as uh, Nasmul Hussain Shanto's furniture was disturbed. He was gone for 12 with two boundaries. After that uh, it was uh, Amadi Hassan Miraz was the next victim as Trent Bolt actually got his wicket as well and then there was a bit of a frustration for New Zealand from 115 for 8 uh, suddenly we saw that uh, the tail enders Taskin Ahmed along with Kamrul Islam Ravi indulged in some stroke making in fact what they did is they tried to uh, give them such room outside the off stamp and slam the ball and that's what precisely doing and they were uh, really uh, doing it uh, in a fashion where the runs were started coming in pretty quickly and uh, they had added uh, 51 runs uh, in 7 overs so they were going at a good clip as well and definitely that would have been frustrating uh, New Zealand uh, but Taskin and Kamran Islam Rabi were going in their own way they were just slamming the ball uh, and they were just uh, living there I would say but then finally uh, Trent Bolt came back uh, and he knocked the stumps of Taskin Hamad for 33 with 1, 4 and 2 sixes and then Kamran Islam Rabi uh, who also entertained uh, he was there in, in the end unbeaten on 25 29 deliveries 3 fours and 1 6 and Ruben Hussain was the last man out and his wicket uh, going to Tim Saudi um, and that was the end of the Bangladeshi innings as the Bangladeshi innings uh, totally uh, came to an end at 173 just the setting New Zealand 107 runs for victory um, I would say uh, 109 runs for victory uh, and uh, the bowling if you look at it well the, the wickets were very equally shared one could say Trent Bolt had 3 for 52 17 overs 3 maidens Tim Saudi 12.5 overs 2 maidens 48 runs and 3 wickets uh, Colin D. Grant home 11 overs 3 maidens 1 for 27 and 12 overs 3 maidens 3 for 44 for Neil Wagner who really looked very very fiery I would say with the ball and um, as far as uh, Bangladesh were, uh, New Zealand were concerned they were given a target of 109 but uh, what was good to see was that New Zealand uh, probably were really determined that they would like to rest on the final day and they made sure that they were not going to lose this opportunity and they completed the formalities on the fourth day itself so they definitely came with a determination that they didn't want the match to go on to the final day and uh, what a what a good batting uh, display it was in fact the openers got into the act right away with G Travel and Tom Latham uh, starting the show for New Zealand in their uh, chase of 109 runs and G Travel uh, had uh, made 33 with four boundaries when Kamrul Islam Rabi then produced a delivery uh, which actually knocked back the stumps of uh, G Travel for 33 but Tom Latham solid as ever uh, was uh, there at the crease uh, and then uh, and um, as I said New Zealand were pretty determined that they wanted to uh, finish the match off on the fourth day uh, did not waste any time Kane Williamson promoting Colin D. Granholm uh, um, to the batting crease as one drop and Colin D. Granholm came in and um, he was uh, just uh, he was just I would say uh, just um, uh, slamming the ball left right and center and in the process uh, Granholm uh, was the one who made sure that this match will end on the fourth day itself uh, with a series win for New Zealand 2-0 as Grand Home contributed an unbeaten 33 um, uh, in playing in absolute one day style of just 15 deliveries as he slammed four sixes of the Bangladeshi bowlers and Tom Latham uh, solid as ever not out on 41 with 6 fours and 1 six New Zealand completing the formality in the 19th over going at almost 6 runs per over and that was it uh, the test series was all over the player of the match was given to Tim Saudi of New Zealand and uh, as far as um, the bowling was concerned tasking him with none for 21 Mary Hassan none for 27 the only wicket taker in Kamrul Islam Ravi uh, other than that uh, it was a very poor exhibition from Bangladesh and as I said the main focus has been that Bangladesh have been struggling in test matches now that is going to be a big question mark now Bangladesh have to 
Uh, I mean, I wouldn't say that, uh, yes, they definitely uh, won the match against England, as you would remember, uh, in Bangladesh. But overseas, uh, they, they could not, uh, once again, uh, coming to New Zealand, they, they could not really get it right. Uh, but uh, barring that uh, mammoth stand that they had with Mushfiqur Rahim uh, and uh, Shakib al Hassan, there was nothing to write home about. Uh, but one thing, one feels really sorry for Bangladesh that they lost uh, a few good players. Mushfiqur Rahim, the most important aspect of that. And also they lost uh, Imrul Case, uh, And also there was one more player uh, who was lost. So that was not something that Bangladesh should have liked. But nevertheless, it's all over. Uh, in fact, New Zealand uh, completely um, uh, completing it in on a very nice manner as uh, they won the match by nine wickets and took the series 2-0. Now, as far as other cricket news are concerned, as I said, uh, the uh, one was wondering whether everybody one was really waiting for everybody videos to make a make an appearance in the final T20 match, which is coming up between South Africa and Sri Lanka. Uh, but uh, that was uh, not to be. Um, I mean, not that it was not to be. It is something which is going to happen. But um, the, this was something which was unexpected, as uh, ABD Villiers uh, was named in the South African squad and he was he was he's been named captain so basically Sabiri Williams is back in business now so he has been named as the captain so he's back and that itself uh, is a is a very big news for South Africa and um, the as I said Lungi Gidi uh, the 20 year old aggressive pace bowler who did a fine turn in the uh, both the T20s where uh, he not only bowled tightly he also not only not only bowled tightly but also picked up some big wickets and that really shows he bowls with a lot of pace as well and he has been pretty impressive and that has impressed the selectors and the South African selectors have actually selected him uh, for the one day series so he would make his debut in one day internationals and what a way for Lungi Giri graduating from the T20 to the ODIs so Lungi Giri is the other one who has come to the team and also another good news for um, South Africa is that after a long uh, long time Chris Morris is also back in action Chris Morris as you know is a sort of a real surprise factor uh, and uh, the match is not over when Chris Morris is there the Chris I can tell you that so every video so this is the team uh, which has been selected I'm not going to into the uh, real team here but I can tell you one thing for sure uh, that um, uh, it's going to be a very good series and South Africa have been strengthened uh, after every video has made it back De Villiers, Amla, Farhan, Bayadin, Quinton Decock, Dumini, Duplessis, Tahir, Miller, Chris Morris, Parnell, Lungi Yidi, Andil Felkovayo, the other pace bowler, Dwayne Pretorius, Kaliso Ragavarna, Tabra Shamsi. There is no, I mean, Adel Shreen is out due to injury. Uh, there is no Arun Fungi. So, really, Rizu, Kyle Abbott and all uh, have become cold pack players now, as you all know. So, so that is gone. As far as uh, the Indian team, which was named for the um, T20 series, uh, well, India decided to rest their uh, key spinners, uh, Ravi Chandra Nashpur and Ravindra Jadeja, and instead they have brought in the leg spinner Amit Mishra into the squad, and also they have brought in the red arm Afi Parvez Razul into the squad. Uh, and the, as far as looking at the T20 squad, uh, it's a really young squad, but uh, definitely uh, would pack a lot of punch. KL Rahul and Mandeep Singh is getting an opportunity here. He's been scoring well in the IPL, and he's an exciting prospect, I can tell you that. So Rahul and Mandeep Singh, these two youngsters will be opening the innings for India, I reckon. And then Virat Kohli is the captain. Uh, there is no, uh, uh, th there is no Rohit Sharma. Uh, I don't see Rohit Sharma's name probably due to injury. Uh, and then Dhoni is the keeper. Then they have Virat Singh and Suresh Raina. And also Rishabh Pant uh, is another one who is a very, very exciting prospect. He really hits the ball a long way and hits it with immense power. So Rishabh Pant is just, um, he's an youngster, as you know, he, he already holds the record for the fastest century uh, in the uh, in, in under-19 um, uh, World Cup for India. And uh, Rishabh Pant is also a wicketkeeper as well. So Rishabh Pant is someone who's going to be exciting and he's the one to me uh, who's going to be keenly watched. So they have a lot of riches for India, Hardik Pandya, Amit Mishra, Parvez Rasool, Yuzendra Chahal is there, Manish Pandey. So this is the team. Uh, which uh, from which uh, the team would be chosen Bhuvneshwar Kumar, Ashish Nehra so this is the team here so but all in all uh, it should be uh, a very interesting spectacle as far as the T20s are concerned as you know England are also very strong they also have a strong lineup 
and I think we are definitely going to have uh, some uh, real meaty clashes once again as happened in the ODI series uh, j just recently. Well dear fan subscribers, uh, that's about it as far as today's cricket show goes. Uh, hope to see you all tomorrow in my next cricket show uh, and it's good night from my studios. Thank you.